good morning everybody uh and assalamu alaikum in, uh, in my language uh, the paper i will give today is uh, titled black men and women in arabic literature and culture uh, and we have to differentiate first of all between arabic culture and Islamic culture because arabic culture uh, came or were there before Islam. Islam came only 1,200 years ago, and Arabic culture dates back to more than 2,000 years. Uh, the idea of racism is a very tricky one. Uh, and from my readings, uh, I can classify the people who wrote about this into two main groups. Uh, uh, the people who bewail uh, Arabs for uh, the suffering as slavery of black people or of the world, and those who write objectively. So the problem is sometimes some people who write about racism are racist and subject to research. This is a big problem for us. So the researcher has to be objective to read and give his uh, fair ideas, uh, point of view, without you know uh, being affected by his personal like uh, view, his personal ideas, his religion, his background, and so on. Uh, discrimination and racism against black people is an old story, very ancient story. Thousands of years. Even in uh, ancient times, uh, more than 10,000 years ago, there was racism against the blacks in uh, the Middle East. So there is a big difference as well, I have to mention now, between the Middle East and Arab. Because the, uh, the Middle East um, includes Arab uh, countries, Arab people, and non-Arab countries. Like Turkey, like Greece, like Cyprus, like uh, modern day Israel. Like all these are Middle East, but we are not that. So we have to be careful. So sometimes, you know, uh, the word is Arab, the Middle East, and Arab, um, uh, used interchangeably in the, in the paper. Uh, so as I just said, in the Parabolic era, thousands of years ago, there was a racism and discrimination against blacks. And you can see from the Parabolic paintings that uh, some uh, black slaves uh, uh, doing hard jobs. Again, after this, in Talmudic, the uh, Middle East, uh, in the past, Palestine, Iran, and modern day Israel, we removed as well um, uh, racism against the blacks. Uh, to move on historically, we come to the Roman Christian Empire, and there was again uh, racism against the blacks. And we move to the pre Islamic era, which is like 200 years before Islam, and there was again racism against the black people. Let's say we come to uh, the Islamic uh, period uh, for Arab, uh, or so again, uh, black people in the Arab Islamic world. Well, as I've just said, there's a big difference between the Middle East, the Arab world, and the Muslim world. So, as we have seen, there was discrimination against that all over these times, and until now, we will come to see we uh, see uh, racism and discrimination against the black people. So how did the story begin? The story began with the curse of Ham. The curse of Ham is mentioned in the Old Bible, in the Talmudic Bible, in the Old Testament, uh, and for the uh, by the way, is a Jewish, he uh, wrote two or three um, uh, valuable books about, uh, about this. Since the curse of Ham has been the same greatest justification for the black slavery for more than a thousand years. Okay. Uh, the majority of, of writers who wrote about racism in the, in the Arab and the Middle East, the Arab and the Middle East, say that um, Arabs took the prejudice and, uh, against the black people from the uh, old Bible. Uh, in fact, it, Pre-Islamic Arabia was pagan. They, they, of course, there were a uh, few hundred Christians here or there, but in uh, all in all, they were pagan. 
So Adam stole this prejudice from uh, the Old Testament. And this continued for some time. And even when Ptolemy came with his uh, theories about the world, and uh, when the world was divided into seven geographic um, uh, spheres, blacks from the south, white from the uh, north, and so on, Arabs as well believed in these stories. Um, now, we, I just said that from, uh, from a historical point of view, uh, as far as we know, racism against blacks started in Pharaonic Egypt, okay, and then it moved uh, to uh, the Roman Empire and the pre-Islamic uh, period. Now I speak about this, the pre-Islamic period, because we have a lot of literature on this in, in, in the Arab world. Uh, we call it a Jahiliya, the pre-Islamic uh, means ignorance, the period of ignorance. Uh, and in this period, uh, we have a lot about them. Um, Arabic literature, Arabic uh, poems like Antara ibn Shaddad, uh, and, 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 and uh, a few more who were very prominent. And at this time, we can say that the blacks started to fight back a little bit, not much, but a little bit. So we read an Arabic literature about um, black, black poets who uh, defended themselves, defended the blackness, and you win some other Arab poets. Uh, mocked them, was so badly about them, and uh, they uh, fought back, okay, uh, and mocking the Arabs, and this is still reported in, in Arab literature. Uh, during uh, this period in the first uh, century, uh, first and uh, sixth century, uh, there was more than one war between the Arabs and the Ethiopians, and from there there was some sort of enmity between uh, both parties. Uh, Ethiopians invaded Yemen and lived there for uh, some decades. And uh, when Prophet Muhammad was born in uh, 570, uh, Yemen was under uh, Ethiopian occupation. Uh, regarding this, uh, Nabi Khazan in 2004 uh, says in his very important book, it is a fantastic book in Arabic about racism against the blacks in the Arab world and the Arab culture. Said that they, uh, uh, they were to uh, discourses regarding black people in the Arab world. One is the contemporary, friendly uh, narrative, and the second one is antagonistic narrative. But he argued that the uh, antagonistic one won over the uh, reconciliatory narrative. Uh, I like uh, the thousand word book, but uh, for me, I am Arab, but sometimes he uh, is discriminating uh, against the Arab. Uh, this is uh, the least. Okay. Uh, but this is a really decent book uh, for anyone who can read Arab. Now we come to blacks in Islam. Uh, the black color, and we can see from here, from the chart. Uh -huh. Yes, here is a, uh, this, this is taken from a master degree thesis by uh, a Jordanian uh, female researcher, um, Al Marazika, 2010, and she studied colors in Islam. Okay, so uh, the white color here it comes first, then a uh, green color. And black comes third. Okay, so the color, the, the color black, or the black color was mentioned seven times in the Quran in six uh, verses, I guess. Uh, none of these seven verses from the Quran refer to black people at all. So there is no mention of black color in, in the Quran. Uh, the Quran speaks about whites and non whites. Okay? Uh, and the Quran clearly said there is no discrimination against any of these based on uh, race or uh, gender. So, the best in the face of Allah, the Quran says, are those with righteous attitude. So, Islam called for uh, uh, equality between peoples of, of all races, and that's why 
minorities, including blacks and, the, uh, and others, uh, how it to embrace Islam in the way it was a bit um, designed. Uh, Islam, as we encourage free slaves, uh, if you are a Muslim and you, uh, you do some sense or you make some sense, uh, one of the options is to free uh, a slave. So freeing a slave was uh, something that Islam encourages. Uh, now let's uh, ask ourselves how the problem between uh, blacks and Arabs started in the, in the modern world. Uh, as we just said at the beginning, blacks and other minorities lived uh, in harmony uh, in the newly Islamic state during the lifetime of Muhammad Muhammad and then we will not no problem with that. But when Prophet Muhammad died, uh, after a few years, problems started to, to happen uh, between uh, blacks. So blacks felt that they were very uh, equal uh, to whites or uh, non-blacks at that time. But when Prophet Muhammad died, things started to change a little bit. They did not think that they, they are on the same uh, level of equality uh, which he used to uh, enjoy during uh, the lifetime of Muhammad. So some of them started to uh, feel a bit nervous about this. Uh, so they joined the uh, Shia uh, sect of Islam. Uh, later and later we see that uh, Islam even in the calendar of Ali, people started to, uh, Islam quite started to be divided between themselves or among themselves in, into uh, Shia and Sunni. Uh, uh, the majority of black people joined the uh, Shia faction. Mm. And that's why uh, uh, after Ali uh, lost, so he started to suffer a little bit. But this was not the end of the story. Uh, they joined the uh, Abbasid Caliphate when they won against the, uh, the uh, Umayyad. Uh, family, and before some decades, they lived in, in peace and harmony with other uh, members of the uh, society. But the problem started to happen again in a way that rulers allowed the Turkish uh, 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 fighters to have a bigger role into the, in the society. So when this happened, uh, most of the uh, minorities or many of the, of the people over there uh, start to suffer because uh, the Turkish the fighter or the Turkish who came to be, uh, to be very influential at that time he start to impose like uh, higher taxes uh, on many of them. So it was the poor who suffered a lot. So these people started to, um, to suffer a lot than they used to, to do in the past. Uh, and it was not only the blacks, it was uh, uh, more than this. The story was more than this. So uh, a smaller revolt started in Jordan uh, uh, in response to the, uh, the Turkish uh, increasing role. And after this happened what we call the Zanj uh, Revolution, the Black Revolution. The Black Revolution was not a religious one. It was an economic one against, against poverty and injustice. Uh, the, 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 the reason I think is that the, the head of the revolutionary uh, people was a Persia. Okay, so the, uh, these people who revolted, the majority of course were, were black, that's why it's called the Zanj or the Black Revolution, but it included all the, 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 the people who felt and secure and felt uh, like discriminated against uh, under the Abbasid rule, of course, at the hand of the Turkish uh, soldiers. Uh, this was the, um, the story with the, the black man. The story with black women is a little bit different because black women uh, were a little bit lucky uh, than black men. Uh, unlike man, they uh, the uh, wagon houses with nursing uh, children uh, and so on. Uh, 
Arabs uh, have a lot, uh, had a lot to say about black women, especially uh, fair black. They like the, the, the fair black women uh, so much, and many Arab uh, poets wrote uh, poems about this, uh, saying uh, uh, something about the good qualities of black women, how strong they are, how bad uh, mothers, and some of them took, took uh, these women as uh, wives or as concubines. As we said uh, earlier, the blacks in the Arab world, and we have to remember that it was uh, uh, more than 1,000 years ago, had the chance to fight back. But if we compare this to the situation in Europe, uh, uh, unfortunately, we should say, if we are objective, that blacks in the Arab world felt more uh, uh, safely than, than, than in Europe. Uh, if you compare again the, the black presence in uh, European literature uh, at this time, you have only devilish black characters uh, who are doing the political deeds and bad things, but we don't, we don't have the same in the Arab world. Why uh, later when uh, slavery started and the thousands or hundreds of thousands of blacks were taken to Africa to America and all, uh, black people in Europe and America did not have the time uh, of the chance to fight back in the same way they did in the Arab world. So the, the uh, poetry uh, works uh, left to us um, include a lot of these poems in which black poets fight against uh, Arabs who move to them. And we should remember that in the Arab world, in uh, Egypt, my country, we had a ruler, a caliph, who was a black from uh, slave origin. And his name was Kafur uh, al-Shidi. He ruled them, uh, Egypt in the uh, late, by the end of the 10th century. He was born in uh, 905. So he ruled Egypt uh, by the end of the uh, 10th century. So we have a caliph, a ruler who was black from slave origin. We don't see this in Europe. This has never happened in Europe in the past. Only like 10 years ago or something, Obama won uh, the presidential elections in America like 10 years ago or something. Uh, to summarize, I have to, to say something. Uh, in a way, uh, many of us are racist or many of us discriminate against others without knowing it or without knowing this. So racism is common and we have to teach ourselves about this. We uh, have to respect others. And living like, uh, about half my life outside my country, uh, as a foreigner, you can see this, you can feel it. Uh, anyway, you go, uh, Foreigner, you will take things in a different way. So, to put it in other words, the black people suffered in the Arab world and they suffered in, uh, during the Islamic period as well. But we have to compare this, to see this in, 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 in other respects with, with uh, the, the suffering they, uh, they have, they have suffered from in other periods and during different periods of time. As I said, the pharaonic, uh, uh, heathen uh, in Egypt or pagan Egypt that uh, more than uh, 10,000 years ago uh, in Jewish Talmudic uh, Palestine and Levant areas, for example, in Christian, Roman, and pre Islamic uh, uh, Arabia, and later they suffered a lot as well uh, during the Islamic period. Okay, so during all this time they suffered and they are still suffering until now. Okay. The suffering has not stopped. In Europe and America, they, they, are, they are still suffering, and there is some sort of discrimination against America, against the black people uh, in America and Europe. And in the Middle East, as well, in my country, and everywhere we are, and there are some sort of uh, uh, discrimination against the black people, or people of that color, and so on. And what is clear now is. Uh, for example, in America, after uh, 
the killing of uh, George Floyd by an American police officer a few months ago, uh, we, uh, we, we see that many uh, protests and, uh, have started to, uh, to go under uh, the situation over there. Uh, and at the same time, we have people, the far right, who are going against these uh, protests. So this is sad if you have the black people, for example, now suffering uh, and uh, protesting against these sufferings. And on the other hand, you have the far right in Europe and America uh, protesting again and uh, trying to uh, object to these uh, protests. It is not fair uh, to see this happening in the 21st century. Uh, so, in, in one sentence, uh, we can uh, uh, finish this by saying that black suffering has been there centuries ago, thousands of years ago, it has been there, and the world has to sort this out, has to find a solution for this uh, in the 21st century. Uh, nobody has to suffer because of his color, because of his race, or because of his uh, religion, and what applies for uh, the black people applies for everybody else, for uh, non-blacks, for whites, for Africans, for, for anybody, for Asians, uh, because racism, as we see, has many different uh, uh, facets. Uh, we have uh, racism against Asians in America, against uh, Arabs here and there, so this has to stop. Not only racism against the blacks, any type of racism must stop. Thank you very much.